your company promotes products and services over the web, and if your ADA compliance is shaky, then you are at risk. How much risk? Well, that depends. In this video, ADA Website Compliance Part 1, we'll take a look at how to think about the ADA rules that may apply to your website. In the second video, Part 2, I talk about how you can perform an actual evaluation of your website's ADA compliance. The first thing you want to know about ADA website compliance is it's not a matter of settled law, at least not everywhere. In some jurisdictions, courts have said ADA compliance does not apply to websites. In other jurisdictions, courts have said, oh, yes, it does apply to websites. So to some extent, it may matter in which jurisdiction your company is located. The second thing to know is that website compliance with the ADA rules is a matter of degree. The rule says there are exceptions which may apply when compliance would result in a significant harm to the company. What this means is not always clear, but what is clear is that a mom and pop website is not going to have the same compliance expectation as the website of a large institution, retailer, or manufacturer. The third thing to know is that there's no such thing as website regulators who, like the FDIC or OSHA, periodically check out your website and advise you of changes you may need to make. The first time you hear that you have a problem is likely when you get sued, either by a consumer or the Department of Justice. Now let's talk about your website. If it is merely conveying sales information, very much like a sales brochure, and if you're a small company with fewer than 100 customers, or with annual revenues under two or three million dollars, then it's likely that your risk is low. But if you're a bank or a credit union or a large retailer or manufacturer that sells products and services online, has maybe thousands if not hundreds of customers, exchanges information with viewers with website forms, animations, or videos, and more particularly, if you have deep pockets, then your risk is much higher. Typically, financial institutions, retailers, and others are not just selling stuff online. They're also transacting information with viewers on the website. And by that I mean the website contains forms and grids, animations that compare products or services and invite customers to interact with that and see what suits them best. That's what I call interaction with viewers. However, many websites don't have the correct coding to make it possible for people with disabilities to interact with those forms. Something else to think about. If you offer videos or animations that describe details of your products and services, do you offer a narrative script? Compliance often turns on whether or not your videos or animations have a word-for-word -word script or you might think of it like closed captioning so that persons with hearing disabilities can use that to understand and interact with the information. Something else to consider, many sight impaired persons need a screen reader to uh, interact with a website. However, not many websites are built to take advantage of screen readers which means persons who have visual disabilities can't get information from your site. So the takeaway is this, if persons with disabilities can't interact with your website, you're not compliant with ADA rules. Depending upon the size of your company and the kind of information you make available and the jurisdiction in which you're headquartered, your lack of compliance may get you in trouble. So let's say you determine that you have some significant risk related to your website compliance. And let's also say that you decide that risk or not, you want to improve your ADA website compliance. What's the next step? Easy. You'll want to view the next video in the series, Website ADA Compliance Part 2. And you can get there by clicking the link on this page. It may also be that you want some professional help with this project. There's a link for that on this same page. If you click the link, you'll pull up a form you can use to ping me and set up a free one-hour telephone call to see if there's something I know that will help you. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to talking with you 
and I'd like to send along our best wishes to you and yours.